Hey, what's going on guys? So I finished reading the X-Men Grand Design Omnibus recently. So today we're gonna take a overview, look at the book, and I'm gonna give you some of my thoughts on it. So let's jump right into that. All right, so here is the X-Men Grand Design Omnibus. There is the spine. As you can see, it's got that classic Wolverine on the post uh, image right there. That's sort of become very notable in, in X-Men. And it's got an awesome dust jacket with sort of the evolution of man to mutant. Um, so now we're going to take this off and jump right into the book. All right, here is the book, X-Men Grand Design. And something that is very evident about this book, as soon as you open it up and start flipping through it, um, not only with the story, but with the actual make and design of the omnibus, is that uh, it is very much a labor of love. It's very much a love letter to the X-Men. Um, I mean, everything in this is very beautiful. And as you can tell, even the paper quality is different than um, other omnibuses. It's actually a little bit thicker and it's sort of made to look like it's a little bit aged as well. Um, so for those who aren't familiar with what the X-Men Grand Design Omnibus is, um, like, he even says it's a love letter right here. Uh, so if you aren't familiar with what this is, basically, uh, the author, he sort of tried to take uh, all the years of extensive storytelling of X-Men, and he tried to break it down into this one saga, sort of chronicalizing um, the history of the X-Men. So he just tries to make it into one streamlined timeline um, and, you know, that obviously some changes have to be made for things when you're doing that. There's some overlap in some of the events and whatnot. There's some light retconning that goes on in here. Um, but it's still, it's a, it's a really great read. And the artwork uh, I really enjoyed too. I mean, everything in here is just like so fascinating to, to look at. Um, yeah, it, it, it's pretty amazing. So it starts off with... Uh, Obviously, that original X-Men team, you know, that Stan Lee created. And the one that, you know, wasn't in its inception too popular. Um, but, you know, we sort of dive in and we, we, we learn their stories and everything. And, like, it, it chronicle. And it's interesting, too, because it it's, um, it's great for people who have read X-Men and also for people who maybe haven't read X-Men. And I'm somewhere um, in between, you know. I, I'm going through... I just got into X-Men when the pandemic started, and so I'm uh, I'm quickly consuming massive loads of X-Men content. But there's things that I haven't read yet because, you know, they haven't been reprinted yet, even though they are getting reprinted, like the uh, two original X-Men omnibuses that um, have X-Men number one through whatever it may be until um, the story got the giant size X-Men and the new team. Um... So, I mean, I didn't know that much about the original Days of X-Men, so it's kind of interesting seeing it just told very rapidly here. Um, just letting you know, like, how the team came to be and about Charles Xavier's dream and, and how uh, that plays its factor into the inception of uh, the X-Men and the X-Mansion and all of that. So, yeah, I mean, it's really cool. And, I mean, even as someone who has read some of the later stuff. And when I say later, I mean some of the Claremont stuff, like um, Inferno, and then some of the Jim Lee stuff, and then, um, you know, so like the Dark Phoenix stuff. Um, it's interesting there too, especially since I have been reading these so quickly over the past year and a half. Uh, it's fun to sort of dive into a book like this where I can sort of get a refresher um, and it's, it's fun to just see how it like is reported in a sense as a historical event within this, uh, time period that the author puts together here. And like I said, the artwork is just, it's, it's very unique. Um, and I think it really works for what they're trying to do here. Oh man, that is some brutal <laughs> Charles Xavier neck snappage right there. <laughs> but you know he's not dead he got better as the X-Men love to say uh, so 
So yeah, I'm sure you'll start, you'll recognize if you're an X-Men fan, as I'm flipping through here, some of the major X events that happened. Like I think right now, um, what we're at right now is when um, that original X-Men team was uh, kidnapped by Krakoa and Charles Xavier put together the team that everyone now knows and loves um, from Giant Size X-Men number one, the uh, Wolverine, Nightcrawler, Storm, Banshee, Cyclops, uh, Thunderbird team. Um, so that's what we're seeing here. Then we get, you know, into the, the Dark Phoenix stuff. Um, there's some classic X-Men playing baseball. I mean, really, this book is, like, it's so colorful and vibrant. Um, I really enjoyed looking through this and reading it. And there's some Dazzler action going on. And, it, like, if you've read... Um, like Uncanny X-Men Omnibus Volume 2, or maybe the Dark Phoenix X-Men Omnibus, which is what I have. Like, you recognize these panels, in a sense, and this, the things that are happening in them. Um, and like I said, it's just, it feels, it's exciting to, to read it in this way, sort of retold by Ed Pisker, um, in a very cohesive manner. There's his Dark Phoenix, which she looks very scary. Um, yeah. Then you get the covers for each issue. Guess the uh, the brood is coming. And yeah, this has got like the rogue uh, Captain Marvel stuff that happened. Like I said, it's got the the Storm Doctor Doom action going on there. Um, I really enjoyed all the Kitty Pride stuff. What is unfortunate, you know, Magic, she's a, there we go, Magic, she's one of my favorite characters. And I think the Magic and Storm miniseries is one of the most metal limited miniseries of all time. Um, and it's so fun. And I was excited to see them chronicleize that. Uh, and they didn't, they just, that was pretty much it. She pops into limbo. And then, so this is all told from, like, the perspective of the Beyonder. Um, and he's like, oh, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't see what was happening when they were in limbo. So magic just pops back and she is now aged and has her mutant powers and has her sorcery powers. And, you know, is what it is. But I would have liked to see um, a retelling of that as well. And then here we've got the uh, Kitty Pride uh, Caliban marriage with the Morlocks and stuff, which that's uh, collected in the Uncanny X-Men Omnibus Volume 4, as well as the Storm stuff that's that's coming up here with Forge, where, you know, she uh, she loses her powers because Forge created a, a gun that the U.S. military took, and the gun allows, uh, I mean, it, it can take away mutant powers, but, you know, she gets them back. She got better, like all X-Men do. And then we hop into some of the Inferno stuff. And, you know, having just read Inferno uh, in its omnibus format, um, it was a little bit different. It seemed like they skimmed over a lot of stuff with Inferno, and it seems like they did a lot of overlapping with Inferno, too, which is fine. It is what it is. This panel, though, I, I instantly recognize it's uh, It's pretty iconic, honestly. And I'm not the biggest fan of Cyclops, but it's one of the cooler Cyclops moments. And it is also in the uh, X-Men Inferno omnibus. I remember because I took a picture of it because I was like, oh... I should um, chronicleize this because it's a cool Cyclops moment. And I feel like I have not seen many of those in like the Claremont X-Men era or, you know, anything past it that I've read. Um, here's the Trial of Magneto stuff. There we go. Classic um, uh, Wolverine up on that X. And then, you know, Jubilee comes in and saves him. That stuff is collected in the uh, X-Men by... Jim Lee Omnibus Volume 1, and that is a really good omnibus, by the way. If you haven't read that one, that's uh, that and its Volume 2 are, are like top tier X Men stories. Um, yeah, and then oh, I guess we we finished Grand Design, so here's the thing with this omnibus um, it goes up to like Days of Future Past stuff, and then boom, the omnibus kind of ends here, you see. Um, and then you get some reprintings here. So here's like reprinted the first issue of uh, X-Men. And then I think right after this, you get the um, reprinting of Giant-Sized X-Men. Yeah, so here's the reprinting of Giant-Sized X-Men. 
then there's another one here that I wasn't quite sure why they threw this one in. It's Maybe I missed something and this was referenced in here, but I don't remember referencing here. Um, and if it was, it was probably just for a panel, but like the first team up of Wolverine and Captain America and, and Black Widow, which is also something that I was collected in one of those Jim Lee omnibuses. I think it's the first one. And then here, this is it. And then the rest of this is just uh, extras, which is... You know, it's a relatively thin omnibus. It is one on the cheaper side, um, and I still do think it's worth it because, like I said, the whole the whole omnibus itself is a love letter and, like, an art piece, um, and it's cool. I think it's cool they include these things, but just if you're someone who's, like, very um, concerned about page count and actually getting your, your money for page count, then maybe this is one you skip. I don't know. But I think it's pretty critical, and it uh, looks very nice on the shelf if you're into that at all as well. But anyway, so here's some drawings the author did um, of, like, X-Men stuff back when he was a kid. And I thought this was, was fun to include in there. <laughs> I mean, look at that Wolverine. That is masterful. Look at, he's not wearing a shirt there, even. I mean, look at all that chest hair. <laughs> but seriously, the art in here is not that art, obviously. The one that we just saw. But, like, stuff like this is, um, it's breathtaking. It's really amazing stuff. And boom, look at that. Oh, my God. Very awesome. But then, this might be of interest for some people who, you know, want to uh, create their own comics. And I thought it was cool. I flipped through it a little bit. Um, it's the complete story of Grand Design again. But so the author, he doesn't, like, write a script in the tr traditional way you would write a comic script. Instead, he just maps it all out and draws it all out in these panels um, like such. So you get that entire thing back here pretty much. Um, which, like I said, it's got merit to it. It does feel like they kind of just wanted to fill out the omnibus, um, but it is cool to see. So I'm kind of split on, you know, whether that was a yay or nay thing. Um, but yeah, and then that's it. That's the omnibus. Mutant Milestone. And then there's Ed right there. A little bit about the author. And then, yeah, that's it. All right, guys, so that's the X-Men Grand Design on this. Let me know if you think this is worth a pickup or not. Um, and, you know, please like, comment, subscribe. I've got more Omnibus videos coming. I just got the all-new Wolverine Omnibus, so I'm going to work on reading that quickly. And then I'll get a review, uh, overview and look out for you.